Hey, what's up guys? I'm Praetorian and welcome back to Hearts Round 4 as we start a new series today as the United States of America. So this will be a democratic campaign after our last campaign was as a communist America, which I think that was almost two years ago that we did that. Uh, the last time we did a democratic campaign was the summer of 2017, so it's been well over three years, about three and a half years. So I really wanted to do a democratic American campaign. Now, of course, the one question that always comes up whenever we play as the U.S. is how to make the campaign a bit more challenging, because as many of you guys probably know, the United States is very much the most powerful country in the game in the hands of a player. You know, with all the resources they have, all the factories, the manpower, the fact that it's very hard to invade them because they have, you know, the two oceans that, you know, stop most of the major powers from, you know, being able to invade them without naval supremacy. So all that adds up to make them an incredibly powerful country in the hands of a player. So if you watched the last Hoi 4 series as Austria-Hungary, then you'll recall in the finale episode, I went over two options of how we can make this a more challenging campaign and put it up for a vote in a patron poll. So the first option was to have a historical campaign using the expert AI mod, which they do suggest using that with historical settings. So we haven't used it yet since we rarely ever play with the historical settings on. We usually, you know, have a, a custom setup to, uh, you know, make things a little bit different. And so we're going to try the expert AI mod if that vote, uh, that option was voted for. And then the second option was to have a sort of red world scenario, not using that mod of the same name, uh, but just where we, you know, use the, uh, you know, the AI setup, AI behavior setup to make all the countries that have their own focus trees go communist. Now, there are a couple countries that don't have that option, and I'll discuss what we're going to do with them here in a minute. Uh, but essentially the idea here is that the entire world or most of the world is going to be communist and we're also trying to get them all in one faction as well and i have a way to to do that because if you guys did watch that last series as austria hungary we also had a similar setup with communists where we were trying to create a big communist faction in that one and it didn't work out because you ended up having two communist factions you had the allies which went communist and then you had the common turn and then they ended up fighting each other and so it just didn't work the way i wanted it to with this big old massive communist faction to fight uh, so i do have a way to to fix that hopefully in this campaign uh, so let's go ahead and jump into it and i'll show you guys what we're gonna be doing so we're gonna be playing as the united states of course let's go into our custom game rules here we already have a preset to load up so typically I go with level two here uh, for the major nation buffs. I typically buff all the AI countries by two, uh, but because we're gonna be fighting the entire world pretty much, uh, it probably will be most of the world uh, that we'll be fighting. I decided that we would only do one for this one because I think this one's already gonna be a pretty challenging campaign. And these benefits are actually pretty significant with each tick. Uh, you get some, some very big benefits here. Uh, so we're just gonna do one for for this campaign and then with the ai behavior we've already set this up so germany is set to go democratic uh, we'll talk about why that is in a minute uh, because uh, they will be going communist and they do not have a communist branch uh, in their focus tree but I, I do want them to go communist and i think with what we're going to do with them i think the democratic focus tree would work the best for that uh, obviously soviet unions already communist so historical works and you'll see everybody else is going communist with the exception of the Italians here because they also don't have a communist branch in their focus tree. So again, we'll talk about that as soon as we start the game here. Uh, a couple other differences, um, you know, nationalist China, they don't have a communist branch. So we're just setting them to the alternate route. They're probably going to be the only country in here that won't be communist. Uh, we'll have one uh, potential ally, though I do expect they'll probably be destroyed way before we're ever able to actually ally with them. Uh, we're going to have them be obedient, of course. We don't know. We don't want any issues with Japan there for them. And I think that's it, guys. Yeah, we're good to go. Uh, all these settings here are the default, the regular settings. Nothing's been changed there. So let's go ahead and hop into it. Uh, so we are going to be playing on the regular difficulty. When I want to make a campaign more difficult, I use the major nation buffs uh, because these here just make everything take longer for the player. I don't really see that as, as fun gameplay, uh, just making it take longer for me to do stuff. Uh, so we, we don't typically play with the elite. I think we did one campaign as the Soviet Union as elite because we were trying to make it more difficult. Uh, so everything else here is good to go. Let's go ahead and start. And the first thing we're going to do here in the game 
is we're going to be firing an event that I set up. So this is essentially vanilla, guys. Uh, that we're not really playing with any mods. With one exception, we are playing with a little tiny mod that I created, which is literally just one event and one modifier that you're about to see here. That's going to be the only change that is in this mod. And that is to fix those issues that I brought up earlier. So let's go ahead and fire this. You guys will see what it does here. So for Germany and the Soviet Union, it's going to get rid of their faction. So there will no longer be a Comintern or an Axis faction. And that is, of course, to fix the issue that we had in the last campaign where we had the two uh, rival communist factions. We want one big communist faction where they all join together and uh, fight against us. That's the idea. Now, there might be some, some hiccups caused by the focus trees, and maybe there will end up being more than one communist faction. I don't know, guys. I'm hoping that this works out, that everybody will join the British faction, the Allies. Uh, so hopefully that that will work out all right. I guess we'll see. Uh, it, we'll just ride with whatever happens uh, from here on out. So if, if everybody doesn't join the, the allies, if another faction does rise up or somebody doesn't go communist like they're supposed to, then, you know, if that happens, we'll just uh, keep playing and deal with it. Uh, but hopefully this should result in, in the outcome that we want. Uh, you'll also notice that it's going to add a national spirit to Germany and Italy, just a little uh, national spirit. I created a modifier. We, you'll notice nothing's localized here either. I didn't see much of a point on on localizing the title uh, or the description of this event or even localizing the uh, national spirit. I didn't see any point to doing that since you know I'm not publicly releasing this mod. So this is going to add a daily communism support drift of 0 0.5. So even the uh, any bonuses that maybe Germany or, or Italy will get in their tree that will increase fascism will not override this because it's 0 0.5. That's pretty high. I think the highest modifier I've seen in the game is like 0 0.25, 0 0.3. Maybe, I think it might be 0.3. Uh, so they'll still easily be drifting communist uh, regardless. Because remember, uh, we will not be able to, uh, you know, force them to go down a particular branch in their focus tree for communism because they don't. Neither one of them have communist branches. Uh, so they'll go down their democratic branch, which will add a little bit of democratic uptick, but it will not offset the communist uptick. And then the Italians, I don't think they ever get a, a fascist bonus, but they might, but it won't be enough to uh, offset this communist one. So eventually they'll both go communist as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and let that fire. We'll just go ahead and double check, make sure everything happened as we want. There shouldn't be an, yeah, no axis faction there. Uh, and they should have their modifier here. As you can see, they got their modifier and the Italians have it as well. And then there shouldn't be a common turn either. And so if we looked at the faction map, the only faction that should be existing is the allies. So of course the hope is that everybody will go communist and will join that faction uh, with the exception of a few countries, uh, you know, China, and then any minor countries that don't have focus trees, uh, they would all uh, probably be victims of this massive communist faction, which is why I think it'll still be us against the world, because I think the communists will conquer the rest of the world, honestly. And so it'll just be us against uh, against the entire world. We'll have to see how it goes. So, of course, with that in mind, uh, you already know that we're not going, and we're we'll going to pick our, our focus here, uh, that we won't be going down the Limited Intervention Act. Now, you could argue that uh, this would be the most efficient way to go, since you'd be trying to, uh, you know, deal with each country one by one before they get too powerful, before the faction gets too powerful. But I feel like that goes against the spirit of this campaign. Uh, we want them to create a big, powerful, you know, communist faction. Uh, so we're not going to do limited interven intervention. Uh, we're going to do the neut Neutrality Act. Uh, the other benefit of going this route is it does actually make you more powerful than this one does. You know, this one lets you get into the war quicker, while this one, if you, you know, follow through with it, will make you more powerful than this one will. Uh, so we're going to go with this route, guys. Uh, I think that's the best way to go. Uh, we are going to go but continue the New Deal, of course. Uh, so... We could go and knock out that one first, get 150 political power, or we could go with the war plans divisions, and uh, that you know obviously gives access to the war plans. That's probably gonna be a later uh, focus tree we go down or focus branch, excuse me. Or we could do the war department, which doesn't really give a great bonus here for the early game, uh, but that does allow us to go down uh, these other uh, branches here. And I think we will go ahead and start with continue the New Deal, get that 150 political power, guys. Uh, I think that's the best way to do this. Uh, so let's go ahead and get everything else set up. Uh, we do need to trade for chromium. That is typically a problem uh, for the United States. We'll try and trade with countries 
that won't go communist. So we'll go with uh, Cuba, which is uh, interesting because of the fact that historically, of course, they did uh, go communist. Uh, but they should stay democratic in this campaign. So we want to help them out because I wouldn't be surprised if they end up being a target of the communists. When Mexico goes communist in their focus tree, it does result in them attacking, I think, all of the Central and South American countries or most of them. Uh, so they'll likely start the conflict here in Americas and, and we'll also have to make sure that we deal with them uh, so that all of their allies around the world are not able to use Mexico as well as Canada as a base to to invade the United States. So we'll have to try and get them conquered quickly before everybody can pump troops into their ports. Uh, so that'll be the, uh, probably the, the initial conflict here will be against Mexico, I would assume. Uh, so let's go ahead and get everything set up, guys. Uh, so yeah, we got our trade going already. Uh, we need to go ahead and get our factory set up. Uh, obviously America has an absolutely an absolute ton of civilian factories. Uh, so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to build civilian factories initially, even though the, and, and I used to build these uh, way back in the day. I think in our first uh, campaign, I actually built civilian factories because we don't actually have the use of many of those because you know almost all of them are going towards the consumer goods. So I think I did build a few here back in the day when we did this like three years ago, but that was not the most efficient way of doing it. Uh, we should definitely build the military factories or the dockyards first. Another thing we're probably going to build early on here is fuel silos, uh, considering the fact that uh, our overall fuel capacity is pretty low here early on. Uh, so we might want to build some of those as well. Uh, but I think our priority will be the military factories because we really just don't have very many of those right now. Uh, another thing I want to address here early on because in every campaign this gets brought up, uh, with the infrastructure, it is not worth it to build an infrastructure in a state simply to get the construction bonus. The time you spent to build the infrastructure will never be made up. I think it's like 15 or 20 years or something like that, which how many Hoi 4 campaigns go that long? Uh, I mean, a few might make it into the 50s, but you'd have to build it right here, and then it's only paying itself off at the end of the game, so really just not worth it. Uh, it would just take the entire game, uh, more than the entire game, to pay off the cost of the infrastructure uh, in order for that construction bonus to actually be worth it. Uh, so we don't want to build infrastructure for the construction bonus. You only want to build it either one for supply or two because you need more resources of that type uh, that are located in the state. So we will not be building infrastructure. Almost every campaign that gets brought up in episode one, like why didn't you build any infrastructure so you build faster? Uh, that's why, guys. It's just not worth it. Uh, so we're looking for good bonuses that we already have. Now, we're not going to have a ton, considering the fact that uh, you know, all this this area here that has the higher uh, bonuses is already built up. We got a 70% there. So we'll just go ahead and build out four, uh, maybe five. I guess we'll go five. Uh, how many dockyards do we start out with? Uh, we start out with 22. So we'll probably want to get some more dockyards, but we'll do the, the military factories first. Uh, I guess we'll do Texas here. All right, excellent. Uh, so we've got the factories uh, set up uh, to build. Now we gotta get the few military factories we actually have uh, set up to get whatever equipment we can. To see what we got going. We don't have motorized yet, should, so should probably do that. I don't see us continuing with the fighters there. We have the artillery, could get anti-air. And we probably will, but just not, not yet. We will get rid of these fighters here because we don't want to build old fighters. I think we do have some newer planes to build. We have some close air support and some naval bombers. So we'll get both of those added into this list. Of course, we won't have enough factories to build them for a little while, but that's okay. This won't be a, a huge priority. Our, our priority in this campaign is very much going to be the Navy initially because the Navy is going to be key I should have just ticked these up to the top and then moved them down. This, that would have been a lot quicker. Uh, but the Navy is going to be key to making sure that we're not invaded. So let's go ahead and start getting a stockpile up for the infantry equipment, the support equipment, and the artillery. Uh, the rest of these, again, we're just not going to focus on these just yet. We'll just have one factory towards them. Uh, let's go ahead and get everything we've got that's almost done building. A lot of these are very, very inefficient, guys. Uh, you know, the models that you start out with just are not very good. So if they're not very close to being done, like this one here, we're just gonna get rid of it. I know we lose a little bit of production, but it's, it's not a big deal, guys. These are cruddy ships anyways. Uh, they're just not very good. But if they have a little bit of production, we'll let them finish. Again, I don't really see, some would argue that there's not any reason to do any of these just because they are so cruddy, especially these early destroyers. So yeah, we're gonna get rid of some of these. 
if they're not like it, you know, at least like a third of the way done, then we'll probably get rid of it. Because, yeah, these designs are just absolutely terrible. So we only want them to build one and then use all their dockyards to get that one done. Uh, we'll likely quit on one of these uh, uh, capital ships as well. Probably this one here. Again, I just don't think that these are going to be all that well designed. All right. So that looks good. So we'll just get those constructed. We won't worry about building new ships until they finish these ones up. Uh, you could get rid of this one here. All right. That looks good. Uh, so we've got all of our ships, all of our dockyards and factories set up. So do we want to build any troops? I think we might wait a minute. Yeah, we're going to wait a little bit, guys. We don't have a ton of, of manpower available. So yeah, we're just going to wait. Let's go and get all of our units selected here. If I can, America's so damn big. Uh, put them into one army just to get them trained up, guys. Doesn't matter where they're at or anything. Although we could put them onto the Mexican border, I suppose. Just make sure we don't have any, you know, issues down there uh, early on. I'm, again, that's it's not going to attack us, so it's not a problem. Uh, so we're going to set them up to train if they need the training there, and then any other countries we have around. Oops, want this guy join in here. Uh, any other uh, divisions we have around the world, we'll go ahead and add them in there. We might have some over here in Alaska. Yeah, we'll get them placed, and then I assume we have some out here in the ocean, in the Pacific. Let's get all these guys assigned again to just a training army. And uh, we'll build out our, our division designs a little bit later on and, and figure out where we're going to place everybody. It's just not an issue for us right now. Uh, we're also going to want to do the same thing with all of our ships, although for the ships, it's just going to be easier to do it through here. We just want to get all these guys selected and then we're going to put them in one location for training purposes and to build out our own fleets. All right, so we're just gonna put them all into one here. And then we're gonna have these guys all situated, I suppose in San Diego. I guess that makes the most sense. So everybody should start coming over to here. I'm gonna let this play for a second. There we go. All right, so they'll all start moving over to there. And uh, then we'll we'll get those guys trained up once they've all arrived. Uh, and again, we'll sp we'll split them up so that we're only training up the smaller ships. We don't want to use all our fuel up. Uh, and then the last thing we need to do in regards to our military is to get rid of all of our air wings. We we'll want to design these ourselves. And you know, have our own numbers. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and delete all these. You know, none of them have any experience. We're not really losing anything here. They'll go back to the stockpile and that'll allow us to design our own air wings, which won't be a priority here early on, considering the fact that we're not going to be utilizing them anytime soon. Again, I do expect that the, it'll take a while for us to get into the war, guys. Uh, it's going to be several episodes of just peacetime and, and building up, uh, considering the fact that we're going to be fighting the entire world. We should definitely take the time to get built up. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get the, the standard text there. Uh, as far as... What else we should get? I suppose we should do fuel refining, uh, considering the fact that training all of our ships and all of our planes is going to uh, take time. We're not going to be in an early war here, so getting you know passive modifiers for our troops isn't really all that important. Uh, as a democratic power, obviously, we're not going to be doing any early wars as we would as a fascist or communist power. I think that's everything set up, guys. I might be wrong. Let me just make sure, double check. Yeah, we're not going to build any troops just yet. I'm going to wait to do that. Yeah, I think we're good to go. All right, so let's let it play. We'll just go on speed five. Try and make as much progress in this first episode as we can. Let's go ahead and see if all of our ships are situated almost. Looks like we're getting six more. Uh, there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and get them, see if any of these do not need training. It looks like they all do. So we're just gonna go ahead and set them all up to train. And we're going to want to keep them training. What we'll do is we'll just pull out the big ships, guys. Uh, we're going to also want to set them up to uh, do the automatic split off. So when those ships get damaged while training, they'll go back and repair on their own rather than have the entire fleet go back and repair just because one ship gets damaged. All right, excellent. Uh, and I did move all the troops over to here, guys. I know that means we don't have any in our colonies, but again, we'll be situating all of that a bit later. And uh, opposition suffers defeat in the Senate, so this is going to get us up to 10 senators are supporting our government now. Remember, we can see all that here, uh, how much Senate support we have. We have 53 of 96. 
And then we have 218 of the 435 uh, in the House. The House of Representatives there. So thus far, our government is supported, but that's going to be changing as we take certain focuses. Uh, House hearings into presidential misconduct. Uh, so we're not going to read all these events because we already did these uh, in our previous series. Uh, so I'm not going to read them again. Uh, but you guys can read them if you so desire. I'll read you know things that are specific to this campaign. So once we start going down uh, that Democratic branch that we never went down uh, in the Man the Guns expansion, since you know they gave them a new focus tree and new events, and of course this new mechanic here. Uh, you know once we get into the uh, the later focuses, then maybe we'll start reading it. But these are all the same events. Uh, so this is 40 represent representatives going into opposition. So we no longer have control of the House any longer. Uh, so that's unfortunate. That will stop us from taking certain focuses. You can see we are running low on fuel here, guys. It's not an issue. Uh, we'll, it's just not going to cause any problems. It does affect the, the ships training up, uh, but again, not something I'm worried about. We'll be pulling ships out soon. Let's go and throw any new ships in there. Uh, but yeah, we'll be pulling out all of these actually now because they are done training. Uh, so Germany has their civil war happening because they did uh, oppose Hitler. And so you can see you've got uh, the fascist faction. And then, of course, we have this faction here, which is just kind of a mix of a different ideologies, but should hopefully be going democratic or excuse me, communist. You can see that they do have uh, that communist support there. I think they both have the communist support. Yeah. Uh, did uh, duplicate that, so that's good. All right, so we finished our focus as well, continuing the New Deal. That gave us that 150 political power, so we can make adjustment to our government. And it opened up several different focuses we can do. We like we will go down this route. Um, I know that this is kind of the communist route, but it's it's not just the communist route. There's This is definitely one that a uh, democratic country can go down as well. You can see here this requires you to be either democratic or communist. Uh, but if you do keep going down it, then you'll see that it is a little bit more communist-oriented. Uh, so we probably won't go down any of these here. I think this would be the last one we'd get down this tree. Uh, wouldn't Probably wouldn't do any of these uh, either. We do want to avoid the Civil War. Uh, so yeah, we're not trying to, to have to do that. Uh, but we would want to get this one here uh, once Truman is the president. Just because this, I mean, you just get so much uh, more manpower. So very, very helpful. Uh, so we just want to go down these two get the full desegregation of the military. Uh, we got the WPA. Uh, this would give us 150 political power. And uh, obviously, this is a very, very good one because it's going to get us the fifth research slot. Uh, so we're definitely going to want to get that. And then, of course, we have the Neutrality Act, and this would open up the sixth research slot. So since we want to get this research slot as soon as possible, we're going to go down the D WPA one first since that's only you know, two focuses to get that research slot. Uh, we can now modify our government with that 150 political uh, political power that we got. And I think the first thing we should probably do is get the light aircraft designer so that we can get the newer fighters and have this be applied to those 1936 fighters. So I want to get this first, guys. Uh, I typically go with the, uh, uh, the silent workhorse first to get the political power gain uh, just to make all this, uh, getting all these filled out quicker. Uh, but in this case, I think we will go ahead and go with this this route. Uh, just so that we can get those those fighters research wi uh, with the bonus. So we can do a small lobbying effort here. This would reduce our political power gain and help us gain support. Uh, but I don't think we're going to do this just yet, guys. Yeah, I think we're going to uh, to wait. It does cost political power. Uh, and, of course, you can see a bunch of things happening here from the focuses. Uh, the Turks are going communist as well. Now that they have their own... Uh, Focus tree. Japan abandons the naval treaty. Okay. And I want to say, yes, there's something we we're supposed to be doing, and I did forget. So before we uh, select that, let's go ahead and do this now, because I'm going to forget if I don't. We want to go and pull out all these capital ships that are already trained up. No reason to train them any further, uh, just for naval experience, when they just cost so much in fuel. Uh, so let's go ahead and get all the battleships pulled out, all the carriers... And all of the heavy cruisers, except for these ones, aren't actually done yet. So we want to get all the ones that are actually done. We got a lot of capital ships to get selected. All right, so we should be good to go. Let's go and put these guys into their own separate task force. And then just have them hang out in San Diego. Although I did mess up and grabbed one heavy cruiser that still needs a train. Let me see if there's any other 
capital chips need to be pulled out. Nope, look good to go. So that should help us on the, the fuel situation. Also, let's go ahead and get this selected. We want the mechanical computing. Try and get that research going a little bit faster. Now, we cannot change away from a lot of these initially. And some of them also get changed in the focus tree, so we won't be able to, to, to change them ourselves. We're going to want to do it through the focus tree. It's the cheapest way of doing it. Uh, so like here, obviously, we cannot change out of this ourselves uh, when you're on the disarmed nation. Uh, or excuse me, when you're on the undisturbed isolation. We cannot change out of these, uh, so we'll be able to get more manpower that way. Uh, with the free trade, we can change from this, but we can never go close the economy, which would be the most desirable since there's not going to be anybody to trade with. Uh, so we'll only be able to go to the limited exports, uh, but won't be able to do that until we're at war. Uh, but that's okay, uh, considering the fact that we're fine on resources right now. Uh, as for the undisturbed isolation, that does have to be moved with the uh, uh, the focus tree. Now, we could do it ourselves, but again, that's kind of a waste of a little bar because you could just do it through the focus tree. Uh, so that's how we'll be changing out of that. Uh, so just want to kind of point that out. Uh, also, I didn't point out the fact that we have this Great Depression modifier, which has uh, given us some severe penalties. Uh, and there is some ways to get rid of that here in this branch that we're currently going down. Uh, so this this being up here is going to keep messing me up. So we're just going to go ahead and say we don't want to be notified of that because otherwise I'm going to click on it uh, over and over. Uh, so we do have another military factory. Uh, let's go ahead and assign some of these uh, so that we don't have to keep messing with it. Let's go ahead and just build a ton of infantry equipment and uh, support equipment as well, and some more motorized too. All right, excellent. So I'm gonna have to mess with that while we get these these military factories built. Doing good, getting the Navy experience uh, built up, which is gonna be very important here because as soon as we're done uh, building these ships that you know we already started out building, as soon as we're done building those, then we will uh, uh, build out our own designs using that naval experience. Uh, so we'll likely, uh, we'll likely have many different designs, uh, particularly for all of our um, all of our screen ships. Now I typically go, you know, on the concentrated industry just because I like the extra factory output. I feel like in the long run this is more beneficial, uh, especially in the mid to late game, uh, considering the fact that you don't change your your factories up as much uh, with new equipment. Uh, so I do find that this one's overall when you look at the entire game that this one is superior uh, and that's why I typically go down this route however I often change uh, the the factories around so much in the early game uh, that this one is more beneficial in the early game which is what we're gonna need uh, you know you know in the mid to late game I do have to admit that equipment's typically not as much of an issue uh, so we will go at disperse this time and plus everybody's always criticizing me because I go at concentrated industry uh, everybody asks me why you go uh, for the concentrated uh, I just like the factory app but uh, I find it's it's worth more uh, in the long run than just having the production efficiency retention and base being higher uh, and of course the factory bomb vulnerability is is not that helpful I find because uh, the AI doesn't do a lot of strategic bombing uh, so I don't think that that's that important and there's other ways to deal with with uh, strategic bombing as well uh, but I, I do think that the production efficiency retention of base is incredibly helpful. Uh, there's no doubt that that does this help. Uh, but it's just not it's just not as uh, beneficial in the long run. But we will go with, down this route for this one because we'll likely be changing factory up, factories up quite often uh, just based on what we need at the moment. I do expect that this will likely be a, a pretty crazy campaign, guys. Uh, so, yeah, I think that was, uh, that was about the, the naval treaty. Uh, where we could, uh, I can't withdraw from it. Yeah, there's just not enough world tension, obviously. So I don't think there's anything we could have done here. Uh, it has been signed already, but yeah, I don't think we could have done anything without it. Yeah, because you can't cheat on it as a dem uh, democracy. However, Japan did already uh, violated it, so I think we're already getting the escalator clause. Uh, senator votes for government proposal. Uh, so this is giving us plus five senators supporting us in the government. And just kind of solidifying our control of the Senate. Our representatives speak passionately in support of the government. So now we got 25 plus representatives. And again, that's just all flavor text. So we're not reading it. And it happens every, uh, uh, you know, those type of events happen with every campaign. Uh, so we got the WPA that's more political power that we can make use of. Uh, and of course, we're going to want to prioritize getting that fifth research slot now. Uh, so for the next thing, let's get the silent workhorse. So we get that political power gain and start filling these out a little bit quicker. Uh, as far as how much political power we're getting, it's not much, guys, because of the uh, the Great Depression is reducing it by negative one. So that's pretty big. 
So yeah, everybody should be slowly going communist. And uh, eventually they should all hopefully join the ally faction. Uh, we got the construction done, excellent. Let's go ahead and go after the excavation. Sure, we're getting quite a few factories uh, from trade right now. Uh, currently getting 31, 31 factories from trade. And so that's letting us get uh, almost uh, full two lines here, despite the fact that we really don't have uh, the use of many of our civilian factories. Uh, let's go ahead and get some, some dockyards now. Uh, I want to get a, up to about 25 dockyards, so let's do three more. Uh, let's just see where we want to do this. Again, this is going to be kind of a more naval focus campaign, uh, simply because we're going to have to make sure that the, the allies aren't able to invade us. Uh, we want to control the seas, we want to sink any submarines, or excuse me, we want to sink any convoys they have, we also want to sink submarines obviously, uh, we're going to sink any uh, convoys they got going through here to try and bring troops into Canada or Mexico or, or wherever else, uh, we don't want them pumping troops into the Americas. Uh, so what's this decision we have available? Uh, so we have a, a medium lobbying effort, yeah we're not going to do any of this just yet, we'll do it if we need to, uh, if we don't need to then I don't see any point. Uh, so let's look at some of the other options here. This would allow us to uh, get some more of our factories under our control. Uh, but you know what? I don't think we're going to do any of these right now, guys. Again, these would be all ben very beneficial. Uh, of course, we can do uh, this as well. These are granting the statehood, which are ones we'd want to do uh, because they do give us, uh, you know, obviously more, uh, you know, core manpower. So that's uh, quite helpful, but also should increase the Senate. Uh, the number of uh, senders uh, increase the size there uh, so that'd be one option uh, to, to do a little bit later but that's not gonna be a priority right now guys I kinda wanna get some of these uh, research companies filled out before we do any of this other stuff alright so I think we finally got just about everything built we're just working on those two Yorktown uh, carrier class uh, so we need to get some uh, stuff designed. Let's do the military factories first since that'll be a little bit quicker to do. Uh, just looking at our current stockpiles here, as you can see we are very much lacking infantry equipment, which is one reason why I'm not building any troops just yet. Uh, we want to get all these problems solved first. Uh, so yeah, let's just go ahead and put it towards the uh, infantry equipment, put some towards support as well, maybe a little bit more towards artillery there. All right, so let's go ahead and get some, some ships designed, guys. We have have the experience. Uh, so we already have two carriers building, uh, but I think we will go ahead and, and do a carrier first. Uh, I don't know what all we have available to change. We do have the anti-air there, so we're gonna wanna change that. We don't have radar yet, unfortunately. Uh, we'll see what else we got. We got the secondary battery that's already set up. So I think this is good to go here. Yeah, it looks good to go. So we need some names, guys. Uh, we're gonna have historical carriers be there. And so I'm just going to do a generic name. So in that last campaign as a Communist America, we did name all of our capital ships, uh, the carriers, battleships, so on. Uh, we did name them all based off of the historical names. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I think we had a historical name for each uh, version of carrier and battleship that we made. So for this one, I want to do something different, guys. I don't want to use the historical names. Uh, I want to allow you guys to suggest uh, names for our carriers and our battleships. Uh, we remember for the the screen ships, we name them based on their roles, just so I can easily see what those screen ships are for when I'm assigning them to different fleets. Uh, but with the capital ships, we can have flavor names. Uh, so this will not be the name Fleet Carrier 2A. This is just their temporary name until you guys suggest some names in the comments. And we can always change those uh, names as well. Uh, so yeah, just suggest any names. Uh, remember, we're not using historical names, so no historical uh, ship names uh, of the United States. Let me take that back. If you guys want to suggest names uh, from older, uh, older historical names, like you know from the Civil War or something like that, uh, then we can use those names. Just nothing from World War One or World War Two. Uh, so uh, you guys post your names down in the comments below, and I'll I'll just pick a few and and we'll name our ship designs based on your guys' suggestions. Uh, so let's go ahead and save that. We only made the one change with the anti-air. Uh, so that does, of course, make these guys outdated, but that's okay, they're, they're really not that much uh, different. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and start building. And it looks like we just went over the max by just a little bit. Ah, that's a shame. I didn't think about the fact that we had that naval treaty. All right, so we won't be able to build the carriers. That's fine. Uh, we'll have to build something else. I don't think we should build the battleships either because you're just too limited until the, the naval treaty is done. So I don't think we're going to do any of those guys. Uh, I feel like the thing we should be working on 
is something that America is kind of weak on here in the early game is submarines. So let's go and start with the submarines because it's going to be key to locking down the Atlantic and the Pacific and stopping anybody from, uh, you know, sending troops over here. So we've got to get control uh, of the, the shipping lanes. So having these submarines out there, sinking convoys would be super useful. Uh, submarines are also very quick to build, so we better get a ton of them well before the war. Uh, so we're going to start with these guys. Uh, and the ship design here does need several changes we gotta get the torpedo tubes on there and get better ones uh and i think everything else is good we'll just go ahead and name them again nothing fancy here until actually you know what this is considered a smaller ship so we're not going to give them a special name we're just gonna call them attack subs and that's it guys uh just the capital ships those are the only ones we'll be giving unique names to uh so let's go ahead and save this and then we'll build some some submarines, guys. Get some dockyards placed into those. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and also get the uh, the light cruiser uh, designed. Uh, shouldn't have any issues with this. Uh, so, yeah, let's go ahead and go with uh, some adjustments for this this light cruiser. Uh, obviously, the name will change here. And we'll, we'll just name them based on uh, what their role was, will be. Which, in this case, their role is going to be a uh, attack cruiser. Uh, so, let's go ahead and... Get them all updated here. I think um, a fire control system is just not very useful. We'll keep it in there for right now, uh, but for light cruisers, it's just not very useful. I find that to be far better for like capital ships. Uh, so let's go and get them the secondary battery. They got their armor already. All right, so yeah, we're gonna have the, the light cruiser batteries just all the way across. The, the entire purpose of this ship will be to sink enemy screens uh so one remember once we get those screens sunk then our torpedo cruiser can just wreak absolute havoc on their capital ships uh so yeah we're gonna have these guys focus entirely on sinking uh the enemy screens we're gonna have so much navy experience and so many dockyards and such large fleets that we're gonna be able to have many many specialized ships uh, as far as light cruisers go i think we're gonna have at least four yeah probably four we're gonna have attack cruisers torpedo cruisers and support cruisers Maybe just three, actually. Yeah, at least those three guys. Uh, might have a fourth one, uh, maybe like an AA cruiser. Uh, but uh, at the very least, we'll have those three. And support cruisers will have a lot of AA on them, so we might not need an AA cruiser. Uh, but yeah, we're going to have th at least three types of light cruisers, guys. Uh, we'll be able to do that here as America. Really nice part of being America. Uh, so yeah, we're going to want to change these guys up and give them a different icon here. And I think they're good to go. Uh, so let's go and use that experience, and, and we'll get these building as well. Put them on top. Uh, but I do want to focus a little bit more on the submarines here initially we get five going here and then seven going here for the submarines and then we're just going to set them all up to to build over here in san diego again we'll be stretching these out uh, placing them in different locations a little bit later all right excellent uh we're going to see if there's any other ships that can be added to our training fleet yes sir so we're going to get these guys placed over there we're going to take out these capital ships as well uh we are doing much better in fuel now of course uh let's go ahead and get all these moved over to this one and then what we should probably do since we are just going to be stockpiling fuel into nothing because we won't have the fuel capacity anymore uh, I think after these dockyards uh, we should go ahead and start getting ourselves just a couple fuel silos we don't need a lot uh, just looking for something that has some kind of research bonus. Uh, sure, we can build them in Missouri, I guess. And maybe one in Louisiana as well. And one in North Carolina. So we'll get like three of those, and that should be good. We'll see where it's at. And it helps if I look at the actual fuel. Uh, we're at 183 right now. Uh, we definitely need to get that higher, guys. That is just not high enough. Uh, we could also start getting our planes going out there since the you know fuel is, is so stockpiled. Uh, we can start training up some some planes. I was thinking we were going to do that here at the end of the year. Uh, but yeah, we're already here at the max, so might as well. Uh, I guess we'll get this selected first. Uh, our next focus and then get a uh, another tech selected. Now that we've got our fifth research slot. So probably don't need that right now, but we are going to want to get that. Uh, you know, obviously with the rest of the world being controlled by the communist, uh, rubber is going to be a serious issue for us, guys. A uh, major, major issue. And so we're very much going to need to rely on refineries, guys. Uh, so we can now pass this. We do have enough uh, support, I think. Yeah, we have just enough support in the House of Representatives in order to get this passed. Uh, and, the, and the advantage of this, of course, is it reduces the Great Depression modifier. And it goes to slow recovery. Some big, massive adjustments here. Very, very important adjustments. So I think that's what we're going to do. 
uh, right now. Uh, I do want to go start going on this one, but I think this is a little bit more important. Uh, try and get rid of that modifier because just, it's just so bad. Now that will reduce our support in Congress, so we might not be able to go any further. Uh, we do have special measures here, which yeah, we're not going to do any of these. Uh, again, I prefer to use the political bar for other things at this moment. Uh, we do have that research slot uh, that I didn't get selected, so let's go and do something with that. Uh, I think we're going to do the, the planes. Uh, let's do the fighters so we can start getting these built. And that reminds me uh, that we are going to go ahead and start training some planes. Uh, so let's put them on the east coast. We'll have our ships on the west coast and our planes on the east coast. Uh, so we have 1,200 here. I'm looking for the biggest air base. It looks like this one would be the biggest here in Virginia. So we'll go ahead and make use of, of that for our training. Don't have a lot of uh, planes right now. Oops, I wanted to do 100 here. So we'll just do a few. We'll do like 100 close air support. Just using some of that fuel that we have here. Just get them training up. And then we'll also go ahead and train up whatever else we got here. Some naval bombers, I suppose. Yeah, we'll do naval bombers. Not really interested in doing interwar bombers or interwar fighters. Uh, one major difference with this campaign from some of my, or from most of my campaigns, is we will actually want to start working on. I had to get those training right. Yes. Uh, we're actually going to want to get the the larger planes, guys. Uh, I often don't get those. Um, we'll, we'll sometimes get tactical bombers. Uh, but a lot of times I, I instead prefer focusing on the specialized planes, you know, close edge sport, naval bombers, so on. Uh, and what is this? This is getting us 25 more re representatives. Nice. Uh, but yeah, I often focus on other things. And we got another decision we need to say we don't want to be notified of at this moment. We will want to get some troops kind of moving over here into the Pacific. Uh, probably, that'll probably be next episode, honestly, guys. Yes, we're getting more and more support, uh, so that'll help us out in Congress and getting stuff passed. Uh, right now, we have a lot of support in the government. People apparently like the way we're doing things. Uh, but yeah, we would definitely will be getting some larger planes in this one, guys. Uh, again, we're still going to focus a little bit more on the specialized planes, just because they do better at their jobs. Uh, but we will be doing some strategic bombing, so we'll want strategic bombers, and we'll definitely need tactical bombers because uh, the war's gonna be won here in the, the oceans, guys. And uh, naval bombers, you know, while they're great at their job, they, they just don't have any range. Same thing with the fighters. They just don't have the range that is gonna be necessary, guys. Uh, so, uh, still very much in 1936, we go and start getting try and work towards uh, getting the refinery text now but you know there, there's so many other things that we need to get right now guys so i think we'll focus on that uh you know obviously we need to get radio radio and, and radar uh, but i'm looking for for equipment we need to build i think we should probably have one slot uh, you know getting us naval text like at all times uh at least one probably two though uh, so we'll go ahead and start working on these now, guys. Really need to start getting these naval techs going. Now, let's go ahead and get our stuff for our destroyers first. You know, we can't even build the battleships uh, as large as we're going to want to uh, just yet because of the naval treaty. So let's go ahead and get the depth chargers and the, the sonar first. And then with this one, you know what, guys? I think we're going to go ahead and have two invested in uh, the naval techs just because it's so important. Uh, could we do the, we could not use research for that one, but we can for this one. So let's go ahead and use, uh, excuse me, our experience for the research. Uh, try and get those texts as, as quickly as we can. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at our fleet, our training fleet. We could set up our, our ships to go straight into the training fleet, I suppose, It'd be more efficient. Uh, we do have two capital ships in here still training that we want to get pulled out. Uh, we're, we're doing great on fuel, guys. Uh, fuel's just not an issue. All right, so we got the Agricultural Adjustment Act. Fantastic. Uh, so good could, again, go for that research so we can start getting those. Uh, but can't even research those until 1937 anyways. So I don't think that's going to be a priority. Uh, yeah, I think we're ready to go ahead and start going down the Neutrality Act uh, branch. Uh, of course, this will result in more. Okay, I thought we were going to lose some support. This will result in more support. Uh, probably because they prefer us going for that over the... Limited intervention. Yeah, uh, you see you actually lose quite a bit of support if you go that route uh, Yeah, but the uh, Congress wants peace. So yeah, let's go with the Neutrality Act guys uh, Of course, this does give us some restrictions, which is fine. Uh, we're okay with that. I would like to, to help out with volunteers Just to kind of bleed out the communism some uh, But it's just not gonna be an option unless it, we see like later much later civil wars happen Otherwise, it's just yeah, it's not gonna be an option guys so we can't do this one, uh, and this actually will take civilian factories, and then we'll get more support from the government. 
rather than what the other ones cost, which is daily political power gain. Uh, so we could give us civilian factories instead. Uh, obviously, we don't want to do that right now, though, again, because we need the civilian factories. Uh, so we got another dockyard built out. Uh, oh, we just finished up the Yorktown, uh, one of them, the carriers. Excellent. All right, let's go ahead and get something else built. Uh, I, again, I, I would really like to get some capital ships going, um, but we'd have to change this and, and reduce them just by a little bit. Uh, what is it, 9,500? Yeah, we'd have to reduce them by just a, a small fraction. Uh, we could remove the anti-air, or we could remove the secondaries. I kind of feel like, you know, they should have at least have anti-air. Uh, but yeah, we could bring this down some, just so we could build them and put the secondary battery on there does reduce their attack a little bit, but I mean, that's not what carriers are supposed to do. So we could do that just so we can get another another carrier going here, guys. That would be an option. Uh, how long until this is uh, the escalator clause? Has that happened or no, it has not yet. Yeah, see, once the escalator clause is invoked, uh, then yeah, we can, you can see we'll be able to build those carriers. I don't know that we'll be able to get the battleships that we want. But we can easily get the carriers that we want. So we'll just wait, guys. We'll just wait to get the carriers. Uh, and instead, we'll just build some more of our uh, uh, different uh, light cruisers. We'll go for destroyers uh, after we have light cruisers going. Uh, because, again, destroyers are just so much uh, quicker to, to build. Uh, so we'll take these. And then we're going to duplicate this. And uh, I don't know if this is the most efficient way uh, experience-wise. I would assume so. Because with the... Uh, this class here, we'd have to make a lot more changes. So yeah, I assume that this is probably the most efficient way of doing this. So this is going to be, we don't have the good torpedoes yet. Do we have the good support, uh, the stuff for the support cruisers? You know what, I don't know that we do. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna build, uh, just build these here, guys. Maybe kind of focus a little bit more on submarines. Uh, though the submarines are pretty quick to build. So yeah, we'll do it this way, guys. Any other dockyards we have will go towards the submarine. So we'll just focus on these two ships until we get some of those naval techs knocked out. So we can put those on the uh, the support light cruisers. And uh, the torpedo light cruisers, we can't even get those until we have the, the better torpedoes. And we're not building any uh, convoys. We should rectify that. So let's go and get the convoys built. And there's one other thing I realized that we need to do as well. Uh, so yeah, we just want these to, to build on repeat here. And so probably take... You know, we'll, we'll keep it going like this, and then any uh, uh, dockyards we get after these would go towards the convoys. Or we could pull it back, I suppose, just a little bit, just so we have one convoy going towards us. Or excuse me, one dockyard going towards the convoys. So yeah, we'll get it looking like that. That looks good. Uh, so the other thing we need to do that I have not yet done is that we need to set these up to be able to build with at least 10 dockyards. So we'll take care of that. All right, excellent. Um, so we have some decisions available uh, that we need to take a look at. Uh, so obviously improved worker conditions uh, is not necessary. Our stability is pretty high right now, so let's go and say we don't need to be notified of that. We're definitely going to want to do these two decisions here, reducing our stability by 10%, but increasing our research speed by 10%. Uh, so that's uh, very, very significant. Allows us to get through the tech tree much quicker, which when we're focusing on land, sea, and air, we're going to need to be able to go through these as quickly as possible. Won't go for that. I don't think that's going to be necessary or this one for right now. We're just gonna go ahead and say we don't want to be notified of any of these at the moment. Uh, but let's go ahead and do these. Um, are those priorities though? You know what, I think it is. I think research seed should be a priority. So let's go ahead and give refuge to the German scientist. And so that would be big. 10% uh, research bonus, very, very significant. Help us get through this, this tech tree a little bit quicker. Uh, so still very much in 1936. We already have two research slots going to naval tech. Uh, so we should probably start working on, you know, I typically go land doctrine at this point, um, but I think the, the war is going to be won in the seas initially. So maybe we should go with naval doctrine, just kind of do things a little bit different than we typically do. Now, we're not getting any bonuses towards going to these, though. So that's one thing to consider. Uh, we haven't gotten, uh, you know, the any of the focuses or, or an advisor that would give us a bonus. So we could just go ahead and start getting some other stuff that we know we're going to eventually need to get. And I think that's what we're going to do, guys. Yeah, let's go ahead and start getting these ones here. We know we want to get those. Uh, so let's get the radios. And then we'll get the radar. And uh, that'll allow us to at least build those. All right. Uh, so as far as our construction goes, we almost have those dockyards done. And uh, now we're just working on getting the uh, 
fuel capacity up. Election of 1936, the day of the presidential election has arrived. Incumbent Franklin Delano Roosevelt has already implemented several of the programs referred collectively to as the New Deal intended to take the U.S. out of the Great Depression. While many of the efforts have been popular, his plans to further extend the role and power of the government have been met with criticism from his opponent, Republican Alf Landon. Coming from the oil industry, Landon wants to see greater economic freedom, while Roosevelt and the Democratic Party want to expand Social Security and ensure economic stability. The election may be a close call or a major victory for the Democrats. So I want to say... I want to say that the, there's no real benefit in the focus tree to go in with Landon. I could could be wrong. There are several focuses that do require that you have FDR in office, but I don't think there's any that are for Landon. Now, I might be wrong about that. And we're probably going to keep FDR, honestly, uh, just because, again, there's more benefits for doing so. Uh, he doesn't have any benefits here other than, you know, he has that one modifier where he dislikes Germany that only really affects the AI, though. Uh, it won't affect us at all. So really, it's just uh, the benefits that we're getting here. And then again, I, I want to say that there's certain focuses we can't do unless we have FDR. Uh, I know that there's some for Truman. We've already seen one for Truman. I'm trying to remember where they're at, though. Again, I don't think there's any that are specific to Landon, though. Yeah, but I know that there's at least one uh, for FDR. I can't find it. Uh, and maybe they changed that. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm remembering something. It's been a while since I played as America, so maybe I'm misremembering. But I want to say that there are some, at least one focus that's specific to FDR. Uh, so other than than that, uh, then you really just want to base it off of the bonuses here. With the New Deal, we're getting the the increased stability and the increased infrastructure construction speed. Uh, with the Republicans in Landon, uh, we'll be getting... See, plus 120 political power. We're also gaining the standard oil of California, giving us some research bonuses for industrial and synthetic resource tax. And uh, Alf Landon has a little benefit as well, the ideological drift defense. So I think we're gonna go with FDR. Um, and, and I should note that this is not an endorsement of FDR. And I mean, I'm not saying that, that uh, I'm, not, I'm not endorsing any of his actions because obviously many of the things he did are very controversial. Uh, you know, you could say that he was a great president, helped us through the war, his fireside chants were significant, uh, and his role in getting America involved, you know, you can, you can talk all day about that and the things, good things he did, uh, but I think everybody has to admit the fact that FDR very much violated the Constitution in multiple ways, uh, where they're talking about in, internment camps for Japanese American citizens, uh, or just, you know, the many, many, many other ways that he very much overstepped the bounds of what the, the president's power at the time was. Now, you could say, you know, we were in a, uh, a crisis, kind of like we are now, uh, right now in America with uh, the COVID situation, uh, where we're seeing, again, the government uh, very much kind of, in my opinion, kind of overstep their bounds because of a crisis. Uh, so I think, you know, with FDR, you saw the same thing happen. And, and whether you agree with what he did or not, I'm not going to address that because this is not about politics here. I think we can all agree that he very much did... Uh, go outside the norm of what a president is supposed to do and in and, and certain ways and, and very uh, particular um, policies he did, he very much did violate the Constitution. And I think everybody would agree with, with that, even whether you're on the left or the right, I think everybody would agree with some of the things he did were, were not good. Uh, so I'm not endorsing FDR. Uh, in a, a previous American campaign, um, I, we, we had a, a lot of controversy about FDR once when I, when I uh, voted him in. So just want to put that out there. Me voting him in here in the game is not me endorsing him uh, as a great president or anything like that. Uh, again, I, I do see the, the legitimate, uh, you know, issues people bring up when it comes to uh, what he did with you know, violating the Constitution and then continuing to run for president over and over again, despite the fact that uh, and I know you could say he did it because we we're in the middle of, you know, one of the largest wars in, or the largest war in the history of the world. Uh, so you could say that, you know, he, that was... You know, certain circumstances that would you know, justify why he did that, but the precedent was that he only were the president for two times. Now, we didn't have a, a constitutional amendment for that yet. That happened after FDR because of FDR. Uh, but yeah, we did have a precedent that you, you only did it twice. That was set by George Washington, that you only run twice, and nobody had violated that uh, yet. Uh, so now you can technically bring up the previous Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt, and talk about the fact that, you know, he was, you know, president for two terms, one of which he was originally the vice president and the president died. And, and so he 
He died very early in that that term. So Theodore Roosevelt was essentially president for almost a full two terms, and because of that, uh, Roosevelt said that he wasn't going to run again. Uh, and, you know, because he felt like he had already um, you know done two terms, and and he said that when he was running the second time, uh, you know, for his second term, he had said, you know, I'm not going to run again after this. And then you could you could make up the argument that he did later run again uh, under another party, uh, the Bull. It's called the Bull Moose Party. Is that the right? I want to say that's the name. American history obviously isn't my specialty. European history is what my degree is in. Uh, but I did have to take, uh, you know, just because this is America, I did have to take a lot of uh, classes on American history, so I should remember that. I think it's the Bull Moose Party. Uh, but yeah, he did run again. So technically, you could kind of argue that he ran three times, but I would say that's not the case because he didn't run the first time. Uh, so yeah, I mean, he broke a precedent that nobody else had, had done before. So I mean, I, I just feel like... Uh, you could definitely can make some arguments against him. So uh, I'm not endorsing him. I just want to put that out there because I know people are going to bring it up. Uh, we're going with FDR just for the game, guys. <laughs> it's sad I got to put so much time talking about that. But, uh, politics, man. Anytime they're in a video, it's just uh, people want to fight and yell at me and argue. Uh, elections to Congress. Every two years, a third of the Senate seats. And okay, so yeah, this is just uh, going to change up the, the situation uh, with our Congress. Now 65 for the Senate and 265 for the House. So we control both houses of Congress. And, of course, the UK is going down their route. This will result in them, uh, you know, decolonizing and freeing all these countries in the world. Uh, so do expect things to get kind of hectic with that. So we did get the depth charge thrower because we were able to get that quickly with the research bonus. Uh, let's go and go with the torpedo launchers next so we can get our torpedo subs out or excuse me our uh, torpedo cruisers I don't think there's anything else we need more than that uh, yeah let's go and get that all right excellent we are missing some equipment oh we don't have the carrier fighters or the naval bombers uh, building yet okay my bad I didn't, I didn't realize that I don't know we have research let's just take a look uh, if we have the the naval bombers uh, we have the carrier close air support I'm not seeing anything but the old ones, so we need to prioritize researching that, guys. Uh, so we already set up to build up these. I could change it up, but I'm not going to. We'll just use these two here. Uh, so we couldn't even done the fighters yet because we don't have, uh, you know, we don't even have the the P40 Warhawk yet, so can't do uh, the uh, carryover uh, model here. And we do have the naval bomber model. Okay, I must have just missed it. All right, let's just find it. I thought we would have. Uh, oh, it's right here. I, I thought this was the old one. My bad, guys. Uh, so let's go and get this uh, going here. And let's kind of take them down there. And then whatever factory we get, we'll we'll start building those. Uh, we'll take a look at our equipment situation, see if we can pull back on anything. Uh, no, not really. So we'll just have to wait until we get another factory. It's fine. So now, again, it's not really a priority. We'll, we'll have plenty enough uh, carrier planes by the time the war breaks out. Uh, got more support in the house. Excellent. Uh, so now we're at 274. And Senator from North Carolina offers support. Uh, so the Sen we're going to read this since we have a choice here. Uh, the Senators from North Carolina have approached the government offering their support for the president in return for an informal guarantee that North Carolina would be at the site of a new munitions plant for the Army. They argue that building a plant in the area would create a lot of jobs and provide the Army with much-needed support in an increasingly dangerous world. The two Senators also mentioned their excellent working relationship with several influential members of the House. So we can say they make a lot of good points, and then we'll build the new munitions plant in North Carolina, or we'll have the decision to do so. And that would also get us more support, so very helpful. Or we can say these kinds of deals are below the president. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do this. I don't know if we'll actually build anytime soon, but we'll take a look at it and see uh, what it would give us. I'm not seeing it here. It must be somewhere else. Let's kind of scroll through these and see if we can find it. Okay, I'm not really seeing it. Uh, given these are the resources ones. Maybe it hasn't popped up yet, or I, I'm just scrolling past it. Yeah, I'm not seeing it here. Maybe it hasn't popped up yet. Oh, here it is right here. Uh, so, this is going to result in us getting an additional military factory. Oh, okay, we have to build. Okay, I see. All right, interesting. Again, I haven't really played around with the U.S. for a while, so you, we have to actually build the military factory here. I see. Well, that makes sense. Um, so yeah, we're going to build a military factory here. That'll be the next thing we get. How much time do we have? Do we want to prioritize that? Probably should prioritize it regardless. 
it's not that important to get the, uh, the fuel reserves up. All right, so we got the active sonar. Excellent. Uh, so we're going to want to change up some ship designs uh, with, with having those. We're still waiting on the torpedoes. Um, 82 days to get that done. We'll go and see if we need to make any adjustments to our current light cruiser model. Uh, we don't have depth charges, so we won't need that. You know what? We, I don't think we need sonar either. Uh, so yeah, we should be good to go on that on that front. Uh, so what other equipment do we need here that we can get? Uh, so that's obviously just passive modifiers. We need the battleships. We should probably get that. Yeah, I guess we'll do the battleships. That's the only uh, actual equipment here. Obviously, um, you know, passive modifiers are important. So we'll get that. And then with this one here, we'll get the, uh, which is done here now, uh, we'll go ahead and get the, the fighters for the carriers. I did want to take a look at our ship design here real quick. Let's go to light cruisers. Just make sure there's nothing I need to change here. So yeah, we did have the fire control systems in here. I wanted to look to see, but we don't have radar, so. But I did want to look to see how much that's impacting it. It's not impacting it by much. Uh, you're getting a little bit more light attack, not much. That's what I was expecting. It's just not worth it for the, the smaller ships. Uh, but you do have to have something there, so. All right. We got a lot of manpower, so we could start building some troops, though I think we're still lacking on the most basic equipment here, the infantry equipment, so might as well just wait. Um, but we could have them train it up, I suppose. But again, it's not really, it's not really a priority, guys. All right, so Civil War has ended. The fascists have lost. And you can see the communist support is at 58%. How are the Italians doing? It's ticking up so remarkably quickly. That modifier is incredibly powerful that we gave them. It ticks up very, very quickly. So we shouldn't see any issues here with the Italians and the Germans being communists. Uh, so we got the Neutrality Act knocked out. Gave us a big chunk of a little power and also gave us these benefits here. We'll do the Arsenal of Democracy next, getting those research bonuses, which I really wanted the army experience because, and we should have had our troops training regardless of whether they need to or not. I don't know if I did that because we need the army experience really bad uh, to make some adjustments to our, our designs. Uh, so yeah, they'll give us that uh, experience for all branches. And then we're also going to get six military factories and six dockyards. So very, very helpful to get that, guys. Uh, so I think we're going to get that now. Uh, there are some important focuses to get here after this one, obviously. You know, like changing up to the limited conscription would be very important. I want to say that's it for this branch that's like, you know, extremely important to get early. But then we, then we want to go down the naval ones. Uh, you can get 10 dockyards here, guys. 10 dockyards is not a small number. Uh, we'll be able to build ships faster, just all kinds of great bonuses there. Uh, so we eventually need to start going down that route, but let's do Arsenal Democracy next. Just doesn't get much better than that, guys. All right, we got the uh, ability to modify our government with these this new political power we just got here. So let's go ahead and add. Uh, I don't think there's anything we have to get here uh, at this moment. Obviously, a lot of great stuff to get, uh, but I feel like we should focus on the uh, you know the, uh, the design companies for right now. So what are we getting? Probably the ship designer would be the, the next one we'd want to get, guys. Uh, I think we're working on the battleships. So this should apply if we get something that improves the battleships, though we probably won't. Uh, yeah, I think this will, well, maybe. Uh, let's just see what we want to get here. So we don't want coastal defense fleet. Uh, I know that that's probably what our Navy is going to do initially, but eventually we need to gain naval, naval supremacy everywhere. So yeah, we don't want that. That max range would hit us pretty hard. Uh, I don't think I ever go for that one as America. Uh, we could go with the electric boat company, uh, which of course gives you more, uh, you know, more speed and decreased visibility. Won't be going down that one either, guys. I don't want it. the decreased deck size or decreased heavy attack. The Atlantic Fleet Designer, which probably one will go down, increased armor and HP for the carriers and capital ships. And then there's the Pacific Fleet Designer, which will increase the deck size of the carriers, reducing the armor and increase the range. Now this one is very, very helpful, guys. Uh, with the range, uh, incredibly helpful, um, you know, because I, th I think the most important one is getting that max screen range uh, because the screens always are reducing the overall uh, operating area of your fleet because you just don't have the range. And we're going to need uh, a lot of range. So I am tempted to go down this route. The armor for the carrier being reduced will have almost no impact uh, except the fact that we probably won't have armor on our carriers. Uh, so this is a, a legitimate route to go. I do like the idea of getting the increased uh, armor and heavy attack for the capital ships, guys. 
You know what? I think this is probably a better route. Uh, I think range is going to be a serious issue for us, guys. Uh, and then and plus, you get that added benefit of the increased deck size. So your carriers are just going to be more powerful overall. So yeah, I think we're going to do that, guys. Yeah, let's do this. I think I think the previous time we went with the Atlantic Fleet Designer, and uh, I, we did have issues with naval range. Uh, so I think that's going to be very helpful. It's going to be significant, guys. Because uh, those destroyers, even the level 4 destroyers, just have such cruddy range. Uh, U.S. Congress passes the Neutrality Act. And we're still building that Yorktown carrier, by the way. And there we go. The Spanish Civil War has happened. But won't be able to play any role of that, of course. Uh, even if we uh, didn't hadn't taken that decision, we still wouldn't be able to do it. Uh, because of... Uh, or went down that focus branch. Because uh, the uh, world tension is just nowhere near high enough. So we are going to do the uh, giving refuge to the Italian scientists. All right, so that's some nice research bonuses. We're now getting uh, two research bonuses. Although it's not in here. That's interesting. It should be in here. Huh. Okay, I'm not entirely sure why it's... In oh, oh, you know what? It'll probably be in here. No. There it is. Right there. Uh, I was thinking that this was um, a uh, national spirit that you saw up here, but apparently not. Did they, they must have changed that. It used to be a national spirit that's up here, but it is no longer. So it's right here, getting that 27% uh, bonus there for 1937. That is a fantastic research speed. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, play a little bit longer, guys. Not much longer, though. Uh, I've gotten the goal that I wanted to for this first episode. We got through 1936. That was the goal for the episode. Uh, let's go ahead and start uh, continuing on the industrial techs. And we will do, although one thing to consider is that I haven't gotten the uh, industrial concern yet, which we'll likely get, kind of looking here, you know, I kind of want to get this one with the wartime industry. So we have to wait for that because uh, that is down here. And it would take us a little while to get there. So yeah, no reason uh, to wait to get the industrial text then for the uh, industrial concern. It's just going to take too long to get it. Uh, so let's go and go with the dispersed industry to them. Uh, we do have free dockyards. Uh, did we get, let me just see here, did we get the torpedoes? We did not. 26 more days until we get the torpedoes done. So with that in mind, we'll just put these towards submarines and carriers. All right, excellent. Looks like we did lose some military factories here, guys. Yeah, because I think that was filled out before. Maybe not. Yeah. Yeah, I think we might have lost a, a military factory. And we do need to trade for some rubber, guys. Uh, there's not going to be too many countries we're going to be able to trade with that aren't future enemies. We'll trade with Brazil for now. And we did finish up the research for the carrier naval bombers. Fantastic. Excuse me, that was the carrier fighter. So we've gotten that. So we'll get those researched here. Or excuse me, get those building here in a minute. And I think, yeah, we're good to go here uh, for now. We might want to look to see at our, take a look at our stockpiles. And uh, see if we want to, and this should be going with the design company here. That increased range. Uh, so what do we want to get? Let's kind of go through these. Again, I'm looking for equipment mostly, more than anything else. Uh, we could start going down the, the light tanks. We will want tanks. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that so we can start building those. Uh, we'll, we'll probably, we probably won't build them actually. We'll probably wait till we get like a, a more recent model before we actually build anything. All right, so we do need to get those new fighters building. Let's go and take care of that. We want to get both of these actually because I don't think I ever built. Yeah, I didn't even build these ones. So let's get them building and then we'll also do the carrier fighters. Put these down here at the bottom. All right, so that looks good. Obviously need to get some factories going towards those. Let's just take a look at our equipment situation. Uh, the motorized is looking pretty good, so we can go and pull back one factory from there so that it will go towards... Well, I was hoping it would go towards the fighter. That didn't happen. It went towards artillery instead. Uh, can we pull from that? Yeah, I guess we could. Uh, we will need that uh, artillery, but for now, we'll just have these going into the planes. I'm going to take a look at our uh, the planes that we actually have on the ground here. Obviously, these two are done training, but do we have enough uh, planes in the stockpile to, to add to it? Not really. Nah, we'll just wait. We'll take a look at our, our ships. I haven't looked at these in a while. I think we've had two large ships building, or excuse me, training for, for a long time. I did forget about this. So we can go to get these guys jumping into here. All right, excellent. 
All right, so we're only going to play a few more minutes, guys. We do have to get some stuff building. Uh, so Dawn cards are, are looking pretty good for right now. Uh, I think we're probably going to do more military factories. Yeah, I think we should probably do more military factories. How are we doing on the fuel reserves? Not quite where I want it. That's still pretty low. Uh, so we're going to need to do a bit higher, guys. Yeah, that's just not anywhere near high enough. Uh, so let's do a couple more of these. We'll put one in Texas, because Texas. Uh, we'll put one over there in California as well. And then get some more military factories. Not the one going in North Carolina. We've got some nice bonuses up there we'll take advantage of. All right, so that's good for now. Let's just let it go. And I did not set these guys to just train. That's what we want them to do. Just train at all times. It does take equipment, but we need the army experience, guys. Uh, we got the improved uh, ship torpedo launcher, which is fantastic. That's the last thing I wanted to do for the episode here. Uh, so uh, we're going to continue with the, the naval tax. We'll just get a passive bonus here, guys. I want to get that knocked out. And the escalator clause will be invoked in 25 days, allowing us to get those carriers building. Uh, so uh, now that we have the ship torpedoes, we can uh, get our attack uh, our attack cruisers going. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that now. Yeah, I feel like we have enough time to do this. So we're gonna wanna get some sonar here, obviously. We want this to be radar, but yeah, we're not gonna be able to get that just yet. Oops, my bad, didn't mean to do that, guys. Let's duplicate this, because I hadn't done that yet. Uh, we're about to mess everything up. Let's go and get the sonar here, uh, and yeah, we'll just have to leave the fire control systems for now, uh, even though I know that's not gonna have any effect. What we could do, actually, let's do it this way. Instead of getting fire control system, because that's not gonna really do anything, we'll just get the sonar since we don't have the radar uh, to put anywhere. Yeah, we'll just put the sonar there, guys. Uh, though I don't think, these guys might not even need it. We'll, we'll take a look. Let's finish designing these first. Uh, so everything's good down here. This is gonna be a torpedo cruiser, so uh, we're gonna want, uh, we'll probably just get, we'll just have one of these so they can at least like defend themselves. Uh, but other than that, uh, we're gonna wanna put torpedoes in every slot that we can. And that is gonna be it. All right, so these are gonna be our torpedo cruisers, guys. Uh, they'll have a little bit of ability to kind of defend themselves uh, and then really just focus in on the, the torpedoes. Uh, here in these middle slots, and then we'll have them be the ones giving us some detection here. I think that'll be helpful. Uh, so I think this is good to go. Yeah, we're good to go. Let's go ahead and save this 24 experience and get these guys building. I'm doing the light cruisers first, guys, uh, over the, de the destroyers, which we would actually be able to get going, I think, now. Yeah, I think we have everything. Could wait for the radios to build them, but yeah, we actually have everything, so we could go ahead and design the destroyers as well. Uh, but I've been focusing on the light cruisers simply because they take longer to build uh, than destroyers. Destroyers should build incredibly quickly. Uh, so we're gonna like pull back on the submarines a bit, put those into those torpedo cruisers, and I suppose we could also design our destroyers if I remember to do that in the beginning of the next episode. Uh, we'd have to destroy, uh, excuse me, we'd have to design our destroyers, and then in 25 days, we'd be able to get those those carriers building as well. So yeah, we'll be able to do a, a lot more ship designs in the beginning of the next episode. I'll, I'll try and remember to. Uh, hopefully when uh, the escalator clause happens, that'll remind me if I forget in the beginning of the next episode to, to start getting some stuff done, uh, get some destroyers built out. Obviously, we are starting to, to reach the limit on our dockyards here, so we are going to need to get more dockyards uh, going. We'll pull back on the, the convoys as well uh, a little bit, and it does seem that we are lacking on the chromium, uh, so let's go and trade with Cuba for some more. Oops, and that's not what we wanted. Just like that, there we go. All right, excellent. Uh, so that is actually going to be the end of today's episode. Hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do read and reply to all comments. Love talking to you guys. Uh, if you're looking for anything to watch, check out the front page of our channel. We do have 3,000 something videos, all sorted by genre. Looking for more uh, Hoi 4 content. I've done like 30 something campaigns guys, so quite a few. Now we have done like five, six, maybe seven campaigns this year. We've done 20, quite a few campaigns this year uh, on the most recent expansions. Uh, if you're looking for those Hoi 4 series, uh, then they have their own section on the front page of the channel. Uh, we also have a section for other types of strategy games. I do play a lot of other Paradox games. We have a CK3 series going right now uh, where we started as a count in the Byzantine Empire and uh, we're trying to rise up to the rank of Emperor. And that is a role play series, by the way, so uh, a little bit different format than what some of you guys might be used to. 
so maybe go check out that uh, or the previous CK3 roleplay series that we have, uh, which was as uh, William the Conqueror. Uh, we eventually become, you know, King of England. Uh, so if you like CK3, maybe check out one of those series. Uh, I play uh, E4 a little bit. We just did a campaign as Milan earlier this year. Uh, and then we also play Stellaris a little bit. Um, it typically, is a game that hasn't done very well on my channel, so I don't play it that often. But we do have a couple Stellaris campaigns too. Uh, and uh, I guess that's it. Yeah, that's all the the main uh, Paradox games. I guess there's Imperator Rome. If you're into that, I did one at launch uh, as Egypt. I'm kind of waiting for that that game to to get improved before we. Uh, uh, start playing that more regularly. Uh, I think the next expansion is going to be really uh, next patch and expansion is going to be game changing. So maybe we'll do a series with that then. Uh, but yeah, we play a lot of other kind of strategy games, non paradox strategy games. Played a bit of Civ Six. Uh, play you know different World War Two types of uh, turn based strategy games. Uh, so should be able to find something that you enjoy watching. If you like other genres, we play those as well. Uh, typically, I do those on console with my wife and co-host. Uh, so maybe check those out. Very different kind of format, too. Uh, a little bit more lighter format. Uh, joking around a little bit. Having fun. Uh, not as serious, I suppose. Not as uh, min-max. Uh, so might enjoy those. Uh, if you're looking for any links, check out the uh, description of any of our videos. You'll find links to our PayPal, Patreon, and Teespring store if you'd like to help support the channel. Uh, you also find links to... Uh, here in this particular video, uh, you'll find links to uh, the affiliate links to the Paradox store. Now these affiliate links, uh, they do result in, in our channel earning any money that you spend in the Paradox store when you use those links. Uh, so you could use those to buy Hearts of Iron 4 if you don't have the game yet, or buy uh, one or two DLCs you don't have yet, and it would help our channel out because uh, we get a little percentage of any of the money that you spend. Uh, you'll find links to all of our social media, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, if you'd like to follow us on there. And finally, you'll find a link to our Discord if you'd like to join our community. So again, that will be the end of today's episode. We will have a video on Wednesday, so I do hope to see you on that episode. And thanks for watching.